Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Park Lane Shawl. This shawl is being presented as a crochet along on MooglyBlog.com across the month of October 2020. So there will be three parts to these videos. To make this pattern, you will need two skeins of Red Heart Huga Charm in one color and one skein of Red Heart Huga Ch Charm in a contrasting color. In the finished shawl that you can see here, I used two balls of the white and one ball of the gray. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using pink instead of white because it's a little easier to see on screen. You'll also need a USI 5.5 millimeter hook or whatever gets you gauge. You can go to the link in the description for more information and links to other parts of this crochet along. This video is for part three, the last part of the Park Lane Shawl crochet along. For part three of the Park Lane Shawl, we're going to work on rows 106 through 119 and then add this gorgeous textured edging. Most of these are stitches we've done before. We've got our bobble rows, we've got those front post and back post rows, and more ro repeats of rows four and five. So if you go to the link in the description and follow along with the written pattern, it's just more repeats until we're ready for that edging. I also want to point out that you're, if you're following along with this pattern on the blog where it is broken into these three parts, there is another cheat sheet at the beginning of the part three instructions to help you remember what each one of those repeats is. So the last row of the Park Lane Shawl is row 119, and it's a row five repeat. So at the end of that row, it calls for you to change colors, finishing that last stitch with actually color A and break color B to make the first round of the edging in color A. I'm just going to continue here with the gray because it's a lot easier to see on camera. So we'll pretend this is our new color and I'll yarn over and pull through with it. Then we can turn and from the right side of our shawl, which means the side with all that texture showing up, is where we're going to begin our edging. Round one of the edging begins with a chain one, and then we single crochet in each stitch across row 119. So just single crochet across all of those stitches and I'll see you when we get to that first corner. Okay, so as you can see, I've worked a single crochet in each stitch to that first corner. So here at the corner, I'm going to chain two. There we go. And if you'd like, you can move that handy dandy stitch marker right into that chain two if you like. So make it a little easier to find when you come back around to it. Let me get that in there, there we go. And then we're simply going to turn, not flipping our work over, but turn almost like 90 degrees. And then we're going to single crochet evenly right along the sides of the rows here. Now I find on average, I like to work two single crochets in the side of a double crochet row and one single crochet in the side of a single crochet row. So you've got some unusual rows here. You've got some overlap, you've got your bobble rows, you've got your ridge rows here, which was a double crochet row, but then got switched together by a single crochet row behind it. So there's not a specific stitch count that you need for this round. Uh, round one of the edging or any of the rounds of the edging, it'll work, just work evenly so that it looks good. So work in right into the edges of those stitches. Basically, uh, you don't wanna work into the side of the row we just made. You wanna jump down to the side of that double crochet, but just work into it, find a place that looks consistent for you, find where you think those stitches look good and lay evenly and just work really evenly right along the side of those rows there until you get all the way down here to our beginning point. When you get to that beginning point, you can try and work a little stitch in there. There should be a enough room there in that chain to work another stitch. Then we chain two again, and then you can work right back into that little chain space there at the bottom for our slip stitch, and then cr evenly crochet again, right up along the sides of those rows, and get my hook out there, until you've worked all the way back up around that side, then you can finish it off with another chain two and a slip stitch in that very first stitch. So round one is simply single crocheting evenly all the way around the shawl, working a chain two at each corner. Okay, so as you single crochet up along that last edge, you've got your last chain two there, and then we just join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of that first round of the edging. Now, round two is going to bring back that great ridge thing we did with rounds, uh, excuse me, rows 20 and 21. We're now going to be doing the same thing with rounds two and three of our edging. So we're going to start by working a front loop only 
chain the starting double crochet in that first stitch, the one we just joined to, just as we did before, and then working a front loop only double crochet in each stitch around. When we get to the corners, we're going to work a double crochet, chain two, double crochet in each chain two corner. So let's go ahead and just get started on this together. Right there is the stitch that I joined to, so I know that's where I want to work back into, and I will make my chainless starting double crochet. And again, I just wanna split that stitch. I wanna go under just that front loop, the one closest to me, leaving that back loop unworked. Then I can work that one off. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull in a third stitch marker to secure the top of this one, because I really like having those stitch markers in those chain two corners. Those will come in handy a bit later in this pattern. So I'll pop that one in there, there we go. And then we can, as I say, just proceed to front loop double crochet in each stitch until you get to that chain two corner. So I'll see you as soon as we get to that first chain two corner. Okay, so as we work across that row, you can see there is that unused loop all the way in the back. But we've gotten to that first corner, so in that corner, we're going to go ahead and work a double crochet chain two, double crochet. So just go right into that chain two space. You don't have to try and go into any, the individual chains or anything like that. Got double crochet, chain two, double crochet. And now I am going to move this stitch marker up to this chain two. And this is where it's really gonna come in handy later is when it's in this chain two. We're going to kind of want to have that there to help us find it. But after that, we just continue on down the side then with front loop only double crochets. And then when we come to the next corner, we work a double crochet, chain two, double crochet in the corner, do the same thing when we get to that last corner, and then slip stitch to that first stitch of round two. Okay, so here I am on my little sample at the end of round two. I've got my double crochet and chain two and double crochet in that last corner, and I've moved up my stitch marker. So I'm just going to go ahead and slip stitch to that first stitch we made. So now we're ready for round three. And round three is gonna be worked from the wrong side of our shawl. Remember, we've been working from the front side with all that texture. So now we're going to turn again and work from the back side of our shawl. So this means we're going to be facing now that corner. That's gonna be sort of the next thing coming up there. However, we've got a stitch before that. So if you're getting confused because we're turning in the round, it can be a little extra confusing. I'm gonna actually steal this stitch marker over here. I only have a few over here in our little video area, but I want to go ahead and even though I've joined that stitch since I'm turning to work back the other direction, if we pull out that join here, it'll be easier to see. Let me pull that loop up there so I don't lose it here. There we go. Now this was the actual last stitch of that round, the second double crochet that we worked into that corner. So I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker right in the top of that stitch. And that's going to help me make sure that I don't actually accidentally work back into the slip stitch here after I do this joint chain, which is a really, or join rather. After I do this join, I wanna make sure that I don't work back into that slip stitch join. So now that I have those stitches marked, I can turn and begin round three of our edging, which is worked, of course, from the wrong side of our shawl. So now we need to single crochet in those unused loops. Remember those ones we didn't work in before, those unused back loops, now they're facing us, so they're really front loops, and the next stitch of the previous round, just like we did in our rows 20 and 21 repeats. So because we've got these corners, it's kind of like where we've got those increases again, we've got some other stitches that we need to work in here. So to begin round three, we're actually going to single crochet in the unused loop of the previous stitch of row one. So if we look really closely here, let me try and sort of range it here so it's a little easier to see. Here there is that, that first stitch of this next round, the last stitch of the previous round. But if we go before it right there, there is the unused loop, or it should be. I sort of need to pull it apart, make sure I didn't actually work into it in the previous row. Right there should be the unused loop. There it is. And that first one can be difficult to find, but there it is right there. So we need to work into that unused loop and this stitch here in the corner. So we're gonna borrow this one from the previous stitch and work it with this one. So let me get my yarn back on the hook here. So we're gonna come down and grab this unused loop from before the corner. You can actually use the, the hooky part of your hook to kind of grab that if it makes it a little easier and get under that. And then jump up here 
to what would be that first stitch of the row right there. Make sure you're not getting your anything tangled up in your yarn there. There we go. And yarn over and pull through there and that unused loop for that single crochet. Like so, there we are. And now that's the first stitch of this round. So I don't want to take this one out. This is still marking that last stitch of the previous round, but this is the first stitch of this round. So I could, um, well, I, yeah, right here. This is the stitch marker right there. That's the stitch we worked into. So we can pull that one out. Just want to make sure I didn't pull out one I still needed and get that one there in our first stitch for this round. Now, after making that first stitch, we're going to skip over this entire chain two space. So we want it to fall behind where we're working right now. We're working from the wrong side, remember, so it's actually gonna come out to the front side, but we're just going to skip right on over it. What we're going to do is find that next unused loop along the side here. So we're gonna grab that, and then we're going to go back here and find that other double crochet from our corner. So we want to make sure and get into that top of that double crochet that made the second half of our corner. You can see right there is our chain two space. So now we've worked under both of those stitches. If I can find my working yarn here, there it is, <laughs> one to hide from me. All right, so we're under both of those, the unused loop and that second stitch of the corner. So we finish that up by pulling through and making our single crochet. And then remember our corners were kind of like increases. We need to go under this loop again before we move on to the next stitch of the previous row. So then we're ready to just continue on working even until of course we get to that next corner. When we come around to that next corner, then we'll need to borrow stitches again. Basically, if we come over here and look at this corner, when we get to the corner, that last unused loop needs to work into work with the stitch above it and the double crochet in the corner. Then you skip that chain two, come over to this unused loop and it works with this double crochet in the corner and the next stitch. So you just reuse that the same way we did there at the end of row 21 or rather at the beginning of row 21 when we needed to use that unused loop twice. That's what we're doing here so that we can work both the stitch above it that's worked into it and the stitch in the corner. That leaves that chain two space sort of loose up there in back and pulls over that ridge all the way around. So you just continue working that all the way around just as shown. And then when you get to the end of round three, you'll go ahead and join to that first single crochet made and break your yarn. We're going to make round four in a different color. Okay, when you get to the end of round three, we're going to be breaking our yarn and switching to a different color for round four. So I just wanted to show you how I do that. Okay, so after you've cut your yarn, you'll need to put it on a yarn needle, like so, there we are. And then we are gonna be working into this round for round four. So we need to pull this stitch tighter and make sure that it doesn't mimic one of these other stitches and basically end up accidentally counting it as another slip stitch. So we'll go ahead and put our hook right under that uh, first stitch of the round there that we made, then send our needle, excuse me, not our hook, I'm obviously using a yarn needle here, down through the center of the stitch, the last stitch, the one it came out of. You can see right there, if we pull it gently, it'll mimic those other ones, and that's usually a good thing, and if it was the very last round, that's exactly what I'd want. But since we're working another round after this, I'm going to go ahead and just pull that nice and tight so that those two stitches are right up against each other, and then I can go ahead and weave in my end, and then I'll be ready for round four. Now round four is made in our color B, so it should be contrasting to the previous rounds, but I'm going to keep using the gray just because it's so much easier to see. So for round four, we're going to join to any stitch of round four, not one of the corners, but any one of the other stitches. Excuse me, I should say any stitch of round three. So we just go ahead and pick one wherever you like, get your hook under those two loops, and go ahead and make a slip stitch join. Then we're ready to proceed and we chain one and make a twisted single crochet in each stitch around. And this is one of my favorite edgings. What we're going to do is go right into that first stitch and pull up a loop as to make a single crochet. But what we wanna do is we wanna pull up a little extra and make sure those loops are really nice and a little loose on the hook. And then we're actually going to spin the hook all the way around before we yarn over and pull through to finish the stitch. 
And that puts a twist right in that single crochet that will give us an edging with some great texture that really mimics the look of the crab stitch or the reverse single crochet. So if you don't like this twisted stitch, you could substitute that stitch instead. So we'll go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up our loop, spin our hook all the way around, and then yarn over and pull through to finish. And you can see it does get a little tight there. That's why we need to sometimes give those loops a little extra tug before we do that twist, yarn over and pull through. So we're just going to continue making these twisted single crochets all the way until we get to our first corner. But you can see already here, after I finish this one, hopefully, there we go, you can see we're getting that twisted look, just like a crab stitch or reverse single crochet. It gives that great texture, but you don't have to try and work backwards. So we're going to work our way all the way across here until we get to this corner. And then when we get to the corner, we just work three twisted single crochets in the corner but we don't wanna work into the corner that was in uh, round three here. We wanna work, because there wasn't really a corner. If you'll remember, we just kept working right across with those single crochets. We want to work into this corner as well. So let's keep making our twisted single crochets across. I've just got a couple more here so I can show you what happens right as we approach the corner. So like I said, you can use whatever version of this stitch you prefer. Yarn wants to hide from me on that loop a little bit there, but I do personally find the twisted single crochet a little bit easier than the other stitches. And, uh, you know, it's just another fun alternative. And you can really do that twist at the top of any height of a stitch. It could be a double crochet or a treble, quadruple, keep going. Just do that last twist when you've got two loops left on the hook and you'll always get that really great texture. So you can see here we're approaching the corner and if I flip it back over, and really, if we take a close look and examine that chain two corner there that was left over from round two, you can see there were kind of two stitches on either side of it. It really pops up. The one I just worked into and then the next one, it really lands right in the middle of those two. So what I want to do is go ahead and just grab that stitch marker. It helps me find that chain two space. Then I'm going to work into each, right into that chain two space rather, for three twisted single crochets. So there's the first one, go right in there for a second one, work that off, and then our third one, and then by working three in that corner, it'll help us sort of turn that corner there. Let me get that one worked off there. And then we're going to drop back down. We've worked our three, so I'll get that stitch marker out of the way there. Then we drop back down to the previous round and find that next unused one on the other side of that corner right there. So if you look at your stitches, you can really kind of see where you jump from one side of the shawl to the other and where that corner chain two space falls. And just go ahead and work in those when you come to them and then go back to round three for the rest of your twisted single crochets. Okay, so let's take a quick look at a finished corner of the Park Lane shawl. You can see here's that ridge we made with rounds two and three, and then that final single twisted single crochet edging we did for round four. So if we flip it over here with the contrasting colors, it's maybe a little easier to see. We just did those twisted single crochets right up till we got to that corner. And then obviously we're working from the other side, but then we worked into that chain two space and then popped right back down into that one to continue along that side right there. So actually going this direction, but you get the idea. We just work in each of those stitches all the way around, and then we have finished off our Park Lane shawl. And that's how to crochet the Park Lane shawl. We've now completed all three parts for this Moogly crochet along for October 2020. The full pattern, if you're seeing this video, is now available at the link in the description. So please go there for parts one and two, as well as their videos and everything you need to make this beautiful shawl. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day, everybody. And before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe.